Hi everyone, it's Liz Bancroft Turner from IOHK here today to give you June's update for Project Shelley. In today's agenda, we'll go over what the overall goal is for the Shelley project. This is just to give everyone a recap of why we're doing this project, provide an update of the work we have carried out for the month of June, then review where we are in the plan in terms of what has been delivered and what is due to be delivered, and lastly, just talk about the progress we've made on the testnet so far. So the primary goal of the Shelley release is to upgrade the network to operate in a decentralised fashion. The project consists of the following work streams, incentives, delegation and networking. The incentives, this is about providing stakeholders with monetary incentives to follow the protocol and make sure the system runs smoothly. For the delegation, this is about allowing stakeholders to delegate their rights and obligation to sign blocks to a third party and networking is all about providing the network infrastructure to support decentralisation. So what have we done uh, for the month of June? So starting with delegation and the research paper, we've established how delegation will be performed in a way that satisfies our requirements. So some of those requirements that we've detailed out in the paper are things like state pools recovery if keys are compromised, making sure that the security of your funds does not get compromised if you delegate. There are a number of security, convenience and reward considerations that we've discussed in length and detailed in the paper too. Moving on to the delegation design document, we've been working on specifying and detailing how the scheme proposed in the research paper can be implemented in Cardano. We'll make sure that the design of the delegation is uh, compatible with the envisioned incentives mechanisms. And a few of those design elements we've covered in the design document are um, stuff like handling of stale stake. That is, what does the system do if uh, it detects that a staking pool or other stake pool stakeholder stops producing blocks? Um, we've discussed how to share rewards with people delegating to a pool without flooding the system with transactions and creating lots of dust in the UTXO. We've uh, mentioned about specifying how leader election works with, within delegation. Uh, we've updated the chapter on wallet recovery. This is to affect the new address scheme. So moving on then to the incentives research paper. Here we've uh, proved that using uh, formulas for utility, um, each Nash equilibrium has a desired form of K pools of equal size. So a Nash equilibrium is a uh, central concept in game theory. So here you have a game in which players can choose a strategy and uh, depending on that strategy, each player then chooses rewards um, are paid to the players. So in our case, the strategies are things like I create a pool with cost so and so high and uh, set my margin to so and so high or I delegate this ratio of my state to that pool and that the rest to that other pool. So strategies are either uh, creating a pool with certain parameters or delegating to, to existing pools. Uh, what then is Nash equilibrium? So it's about selecting uh, strategies for each player so that such uh, player or no player can improve the, uh, his or her reward by um, unilaterally changing uh, his strategy or her strategy. So in other words, uh, we have a Nash equilibrium if we have no rational re reason to change uh, what, uh, what he's doing if nobody else changes what they're doing. So the basic idea of applying game theory to practical problems is the belief that in reality things will settle down in a Nash equilibrium. So in our example it would be bad if there were Nash equilibria with bad properties for example with less than K pools or pools of unequal size. Um, so the fact that we proved that there are no bad equilibria means that hopefully uh, in practice we will indeed end up with K pools of equal size. So that was the main achievement on the research side. Uh, moving on to the design document, uh, after having settled on the 
general shape of uh, the incentives mechanism, the research team spent the last month fine-tuning, verifying and refining it. So first of all, we made a small simplification to one of our formulas for pool desirability and verified that change experimentally. So after some back and forth between theory and experiments, results eventually aligned perfectly, which gave us even more confidence then that our mathematical analysis was correct. So the research team was able to formally prove the correctness of this improved game theoretical model, and then the experiments uh, confirmed the mathematical theorems. So we then moved our attention to the analysis uh, side, and um, on that we looked at some of the cases like coalition between players and large stakeholders, and examined how the system would behave in the presence of such complications. So on the engineering side, we examined the question of how to ensure that pool leaders would provide the necessary relaying infrastructure, and uh, we decided to rely on social pressure instead of technical measures, then by requiring pool leaders to publish uh, their relay addresses as part of the pool registration so thus making that information publicly visible and verifi verifiable. Uh, moving then on to the peer discovery on the networking side, uh, we had a new addition to the team uh, who's now looking at this and he seemed to be properly onboarded. He's still ramping up and getting familiarised with what was left from um, the former colleague. On the networking Delta Q measurements design, we've identified a number of real-world use cases that we're going to investigate to act as exemplars during the implementation and testing. So here we have control to make the network usage more or less aggressive in its real-time use of network resources. We've identified the key use cases, um, like catching up with the tip of the chain and block broadcast, the delta uh, key measurement approach is being used to help minimise latencies for those activities while not creating adverse network performance for, uh, for other applications. The end user might be using at the same time, so making the Cardano settlement layer node a responsible network citizen while still ensuring it performs effectively. So we are currently investigating those use cases. On the communication protocol then, um, this is an essential part of the communication protocol design. We've been looking at the way in which a, a node downloads blockchain segments from its peers and the uh, way in which it deals with forks. So this is done not so uh, this is done not so efficiently uh, in the current release in Cardano assessment layer. So it's essential that we improve on that. Um, how it ultimately works will inform our design of the wire protocol. So we've converged on a solution and now we are analyzing it to be sure that it's faithful to the Ouroboros paper. So then we have a few um, graphs that we'd like to uh, present. And um, the first one is, uh, is basically where the x-axis is a time, the chart shows you the evolution of pools. So each coloured band is a pool, and the height of that band is the size of the pool. So the simulations use k uh, equals 10. So for example, we aim for 10 pools, but not you know 100 as we will in real life. The ideal outcome would be 10 equally sized bands and uh, we get all that in all experiments and the second part simply plots the number of pools over time so that we should uh, be at the 10 at the end of the simulation on the right hand side. So uh, the second chart shows you similar parameters as the first graph so where the first, um, where the first graph shows you where pool costs are low with uh, respect to rewards and the stake of the pool leader has no influence on rewards, 
And this second graph costs are high and there is a significant influence of uh, leader stakes on rewards. So under both sets of parameters, we get the desired results. So moving on to the plan, uh, for the research phase, we are overall amber status. Um, so whilst we have completed the delegation research paper in green, we are still making final adjustments to the incentive research paper. So as you can understand, speculative research by its nature is not an exact science and uh, while we have not met our calendar date milestones for the research phase, we are confident about achieving our overall business objectives. The design phase is currently tracking green. Uh, we are due to complete the delegation and incentives design document next week. Uh, and then the incentives design will then be merged in with the delegation design to make it one final document. So once we have signed off on the design document, uh, which we are aiming for next week, we will then detail out the technical implementation plan whereby we break the design down into the user stories and tasks for the developers to implement. So just to give you um, some update on the test nets and where we are, we're currently in the initiation phase of defining you know, the objectives, deliverables and work plan for the Shelley test net launch. So I kind of like to describe this as the ODW method, which is the objectives, deliverables, and, and work plan. So the ODW method uh, will contribute to the testnet development by translating the objectives into deliverables, which will then turn uh, shape, uh, will turn the shape of it into the work plan, i.e. your work streams, phases, and activities. So, so far we've been uh, working on defining the high-level testnet objectives and outcomes, We've scoped out the high-level uh, work activities and timeline. We've defined preliminary schedule and risks. We've secure, secured planning resources. We've conducted uh, initial stakeholder analysis and engagement. So by having this framework in place, this will uh, ensure that there is a alignment and integrity of the test plan um, against the user's needs. So uh, this is obviously to avoid the risk of producing a meaningless plan of unfocused activities. So like here in IHK, we spend a lot of time in the initiation phase. This is to ensure users' needs are addressed to create the best outcomes and experiences. So what makes us different is our focus on the education. We provide a lot of education material to help people understand how to use our technology. So... Um, that concludes uh, the end of the update for June. I hope you found this useful and thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you in the next month's update. Bye for now.